of the Thai terms for meditating is tam kwam pian, which means to make an effort, which may sound strange, because many times we're told not to put too much effort into the meditation, let things happen naturally. Or sometimes we may even think that meditation is a passive process, just watching with choiceless awareness whatever comes and whatever goes. Well, choiceless awareness is simply another word for equanimity, which is one of the qualities we have to develop, but we have to work at developing it. It just doesn't happen on its own. And the effort has to be an appropriate effort, because there are times, as we all know, when just throwing yourself too hard into the practice becomes one of the obstacles. And so the effort here is more of a fine-tuning, learning how to watch after the breath, watch after your mind, direct the mind in certain ways, direct it away from certain things. And keep watch over the qualities that are developing there in the mind, because there are some that are going to be useful and some that are going to be harmful, some that are skillful and some that are not skillful. And how do you know this? Well, you do it the same way the Buddha did. You look at what's going on in your mind and you look at the results of your mental states. We chanted just now about the, the Four Noble Truths, suffering, its cause, its end, and the path, the end of suffering. And it's important to realize that it's not so much four different truths, but four different ways of, look, of categorizing what's going on in your mind. It's basically a problem-solving approach. Okay, if things aren't going the way you want, you look for the causes. Then you change the causes so that things go more in the direction you do want them to. It's a very simple process. We do this every day. Whether you're cooking, whether you're making something. Anything that involves a skill has to come down to this. If things aren't going the way you want them to, you have to figure out, okay, what are the causes? It requires some analysis, but it also requires some observation, watching what's going on. And you make adjustments. If the food is not sweet enough, you put a little more sugar in. If it's not salt enough, you put a little more salt. What tells you? Well, you develop your taste buds. Which, in other, means, in other words, it's not that your taste buds develop, but you develop your sense of taste. Or like when you're playing the piano, learning how to listen to the music. It's a skill that you have to develop. In addition to learning how to play the notes, you also have to learn to listen to yourself play the notes. And the same holds true with the meditation. We focus on First, separating things out into cause and effect. But the causes right now are being mindful and being alert. You keep your meditation object in mind. And then you watch. First, you watch your meditation object, like the breath. Watch it coming in, watch it going out. Is it comfortable? Is it not? Does it feel appropriate for right now? Because sometimes what may feel nice, like a good long, deep in and out breath, may not be actually what you need right now in case the mind is sleepy. You have to figure out what rhythm of breathing, what texture of breathing is right for the body and mind. So your attention is directed first at the breath, but after all you begin to get a sense of what kind of breathing is good for the mind as well. And then how you develop the sense? Just by watching. Trying to get a sense of which are the causes and which are the effects? Which effects are things that are really good for the practice? Because sometimes when things get a little bit too comfortable, you fall asleep. So what do you do then? Well, it's not the case that you want to make it less comfortable, but you realize that there's more work to be done than simply finding a nice relaxing state. Once it's comfortable, okay, then you learn to use that sense of comfort as a foundation for the next step which is to take that sense of comfort and let it spread throughout the body. Say so you've got a nice, 
good rhythm going, and it feels good right around the chest area. Well, first you learn how to make that sense of comfort in the chest stay there by adjusting your breath to maintain that sensation. Okay, once the sensation is there, then think about it spreading throughout the different parts of the body. You might go through the body step by step, as is described in the books, say up from the abdomen, up the front of the chest, down, up over the head, then down the back and out the legs, or you might want to stop at the, start at the back of the neck. Wherever you start is up to you, but you want to be able to systematically cover the whole body. Wherever there's any sense of tension or tightness that seems to be related to the way you breathe, okay, let it relax, and then move on to the next step and the next stop. So you've got the whole body covered. Then you focus your attention in one spot and then think of that comfortable sensation spreading throughout the whole body as you let your awareness spread throughout the whole body at the same time. And then you try to maintain that state, both the sense of comfort and ease and the breadth of your awareness. So there's work to be done. It's not that we sit here and watch the breath and put ourselves to sleep. We just simply relax. You use the relaxation for the sake of getting the mind to settle down. And this is what right effort means. Learning to use whatever is skillful. Having a sense of cause and effect. And realize, okay, once you get the effects from getting the breath comfortable, okay, that becomes the cause of the foundation for the next step. So the effort here is the fine-tuned, fine-tuned effort. It's not just passive watching or choiceless awareness. You do have some choices. You can breathe comfortably or you can breathe uncomfortably. And who would want to breathe uncomfortably when you have a choice? Once the breath is comfortable, okay, you have another choice. Let yourself fall asleep or keep yourself alert and awake. And there are the various approaches for keeping yourself awake. And so on down the line. Realize that every step along the way you have a choice. Try to make good choices. Which depends on your sense of cause and effect and on your sensitivity and judging effects. Seeing how they're connected to the causes and making proper adjustments. It was this kind of approach that made the Buddha realize the Four Noble Truths to begin with. Looking for skillful mental states, or learning how to sort out skillful and unskillful mental states. Watching the results of both, and then doing what he could to encourage the skillful ones and put aside the unskillful ones. And then he realized the essence of what he was doing boiled down to four things. Okay, there are unskillful causes that give painful results, and there are skillful causes that give pleasant results. That's the framework for the Four Noble Truths. And then he just followed it to see how far it would go. Someone once said that genius was taking one particular set of ideas and just holding on to it like a dog, holding on to something that's biting, not willing to let go at all, just grabbing onto it and seeing how far it takes you. Most people grab onto an approach and then they just kind of drop it for something else and drop it for something else and as a result never really follow things through. But the Buddha was the sort of person, once he'd found an approach that worked, he followed it to see how far it would go. He realized the importance of the states of his mind that they really did have an impact on whether he was going to experience pleasure or experience pain. So he followed through on that insight. What if you really consciously focused on your states of mind? Got a sense of what was skillful, what was unskillful, and we're learning how to master the skillful ones, master the skill of encouraging the skillful ones. 
And he found that it brought him to a state of concentration, good, solid concentration. Okay, what do you do with the concentration next? Again, you look at the skillful and unskillful uses of that concentration. You can just sit there and wallow in the comfort of the concentration, or can use it as a basis for digging deeper into the mind. In other words, you take the results of your skillful states and you turn them into the path and see how much further you can take them. That was the essence of a lot of the Buddhist insights. They talk about how people and teachers in his time, before his awakening, had been able to master many of these states of concentration, but then they just stayed there. Well, the Buddha realized that concentration itself could be made into a path. It's the difference between people who finally reach a path and then lie down and sleep on a path, and those who get to the path and follow it to the end. So that's what we're working at here, trying to get more and more skillful with our minds, and then seeing how far that skill can take us. What we find in the end is that it takes us to places we couldn't have imagined. Things open up in the, in the mind in a way that you, you can't have any preconceived notion for. But fortunately, you don't have to have a preconceived notion for it. Just follow the basic approach. Getting a sense of cause and effect in the mind, which cause, causes are skillful, which ones are unskillful. And find skillful ways to encourage the skillful ones. That doesn't bring, in other words, the ones that bring a sense of ease, bring a sense of well-being. And then you take that sense of well-being, see what you do with that to get an even deeper sense of well-being, more and more solid. You strip away all the things that you find are inconstant, impermanent, stressful. And ultimately you find something that's not caused at all. You take the process of cause and effect beyond cause and effect. Okay, that's when the effort ends. But until then, you try to apply all the qualities that are needed for skill. And the desire to stick with it, persistence, paying attention, using your ingenuity. To get the most out of the potentials that you have here in the mind. don't have too many preconceived notions about what the word most can be, can mean. It means an awful lot. But the people who follow this path all the way to the end and say that whatever work is involved, whatever effort, whatever difficulties, they're all more than compensated. When you finally arrive. 